Welcome to Excel Basics video number 12. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about formula types, formula elements, and Excel's calculation order. And we have 12 amazing examples. In fact, here are all 12 of the different formulas we'll see in these videos. And here's the goal of each one. Now, to start this off, there are different types of formulas in Excel. So far in this class, we've seen number formulas. That means a formula that delivers a number, like a budget number for January, a tax deduction. But there's also other types of formulas, like text formulas and logical formulas. All right, so we're going to see one by one each one of these amazing formulas. Let's go over to the sheet FT and FE. That's formula types and formula elements. So in this video, we're going to see one, two, three different types of formulas. We'll see number formulas. And number formulas simply deliver a single number answer, like a tax deduction or budgetary expense amount. And then we're going to see, for the first time, a text formula. And just like you might guess, a text formula delivers text, just like a number formula delivers a number. So text formulas will deliver text items, such as a first and last name and a single cell or a category. Logical formulas is a new formula type that we haven't seen before. The fancy name is Boolean formulas. But logical formulas just deliver either a true or false those are the only two possibilities when you do a logical formula. So for example, we might ask the question, has the employee earned a bonus, true or false? Now, with these different formula types, in this video we're going to talk more about the different formula elements. Now, most of these we've already seen, like the equal sign that starts any formula, cell references, like relative cell reference, absolute, or a relative range, or an absolute range. Math operators, we've seen some of the different math operators. Numbers, if they won't change, right? You can type a number like 12 into a formula and not violate Excel's golden rule. For example, 12 months, we saw in our last video, we had to divide annual rate by 12. Well, we just type the number into our formula because that number was never going to change. We also have seen built-in functions like sum, round, and other built-in functions. These are all examples of things that we can put into formulas when we're creating our formula. Formula elements, we've seen 1 through 5. But look at this. We're going to learn about the join operator today. Ampersand, that's the fancy name, or the AND symbol, Shift 7. We are allowed to use this operator to join things together. For example, we're going to have first name in one cell and last name in another cell. And instead of copying and pasting, we'll just join the two cells with the ampersand, and it will join them together in a single cell. We'll also see in this video for the first time text within double quotation marks. Anytime you want to use text in a formula, you have to put it in double quotes. So for example, our example will be we want to join last name and then first name. But we're going to have to put the comma space between last name and first name in double quotes. So join operator and text in quotations, those are new formula elements we haven't seen. And then we'll also see for the first time comparative operators. We're allowed to use greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to. Yeah, you have to use two symbols, which is totally different than math. Less than or equal to equal, and even this strange one, which means not. Two things are not equal. The example we'll see in this video, we'll actually see a few videos. But imagine we had your sales, and we need to ask if your sales is past the hurdle of 50,000 to determine whether or not you get a bonus, true or false. All right, so we're going to see all three formula types and all these different formula elements in our 12 examples. Let's scroll down and see our first example. 
our goal here is to add calls made by a service center last week. So here's our dates. Here's our calls. Well, we already know how to do this even without worrying about what formula elements are in the formula. So let's just do it. The keyboard for the sum function is Alt equals. But now let's stop. And let's just look at all the different things that went into us. Absolutely equal sign. Every formula you ever create will have an equal sign as the first character. Then there's a built-in function called sum. And there we have a range of cells. All right, so I can hit Enter. We just formally named each one of those elements. This is a number formula because it delivers a number answer. And there's the list of our formula elements. Let's look at our second example. Our goal here is to calculate the monthly insurance expense. This will be a number formula. Also, we're starting with an annual insurance, and I simply need to divide it by 12. Equal sign, that's a formula element. Up arrow to get my cell reference, that's another formula element. Math operator, forward slash for division. And now I simply type the number 12 in. Since number of months in the year won't change, we simply type it in and Enter. Let's look at our third example. Our goal is to calculate the deduction for each employee. Gross pay. I need to calculate deduction here based on this tax rate. Now notice, as soon as we see a tax rate where we have some decimals past the penny position, I know I run the risk of extraneous decimals when I multiply the two. Not only that, but I need to take each one of the formula results. That means multiply this decimal times this decimal with extraneous decimals. And I'm dealing with money where I have to round to the penny. Because if I didn't round this, there'd be extraneous decimals. If I were to use the sum function here to add these up, if I don't round, I might get the wrong answer. So I'm definitely going to start off with equal sign. That's the formula element to tell Excel we're doing a formula. I'm going to use the built-in function round. I type round, and when I see it highlighted in blue, I hit tab. Right in the number argument, as we have done so often, I'm going to either click or arrow. That's a relative cell reference times, that's a math operator. I'm going to click on cell F46 and hit the F4 key to put those dollar signs in to make it an absolute cell reference. So as I copy down, it's locked. That's an absolute cell reference. Yet another type of formula element, something we can put into our formula. Now, I type a comma. That gets us to the next argument and number of digits. Since we're rounding to the penny, we put a 2. Now, that's a number we type into the formula. But for money, and we're dealing with pennies, that's not going to change. So now I close parentheses, Control-Enter. I'm going to copy it down. I'm immediately going to come to the last cell and click F2 to verify that the cell references are looking in the correct location. Now I'm going to hit Enter. And we're going to add all of these properly rounded numbers using the keyboard Alt equals. I see the sum function, equal sign, built-in function, and a range. I hit Enter. Now we can add some currency number formatting or accounting if we want. I'm going to select all those cells, hold Control, click on the sum cell, go up to the drop down for currency or accounting. Or I can use the keyboard Control-1. Format cells allows you complete control over how you want the number formatting to display. I'm going to accept the defaults, click OK, or hit Enter. And we've added currency. So we did one, two different formulas. Both of these are number formulas, because they're delivering numbers. And there are the formula elements for that deduction formula. Now let's go look at another number formula. We're going to scroll down to example four. This will be our fourth number formula. We need to calculate what's called cost of goods sold, COGS. So when you work in accounting where people are selling items like shoes, well, the shoes have a sales price. That's the money coming in. But how much did the shoes cost you? Cost of goods sold. 
if you sold a pair of shoes for 60 and it cost 30, the 30 bucks would be the cost of goods sold. Now we need to calculate this. I'm going to control and roll my wheel because I want to zoom out a bit. Now, in order to calculate cost of goods sold, that means for the whole period, we have a beginning quantity. That's how many items we had on the shelf. We're talking boomerangs here. So we have Aspen, the Quad, Carlota. We started with 114. And at the end of the period, whether it's a week or a month, we counted how many we had on the shelf, 45. Or we looked in our computer records. It said we had 45. So I need to subtract these two. That's the beginning minus the end count to get how many I sold. Then I need to multiply how many times the value for each. All right, so we're going to do a formula here. Equals, well, I need to take beginning quantity and subtract the ending quantity. Let's just do that part. I'm going to enter it and copy it down. Control Enter, so there's 69 of those left. Double click the fill handle with my angry rabbit and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2, to verify. Sure enough, 54 minus the 51 still on the shelf. That means we sold only three. Now I'm going to control and roll. I should have had this little thing. I'm going to move it. I highlighted it, and I'm going to point with my move cursor right there, click and drag. F2 to put that in edit mode. What I want to do is multiply that 69 times the 10, because the cost of goods sold should be sold 69. Each one was worth 10. It should be 690 bucks. So times, and I'm going to get that 10 bucks. Now when I Control Enter, whoa, wait a second, minus 336 bucks. That's not how much it's supposed to be. Well, we have to remember our order of operations in math. Parentheses calculate first, then exponents, then multiplication and division left to right, and then adding and subtracting left to right. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's one memorization trick. There are other ones also. What did I do? I'm going to hit F2. I forgot to tell my formula to make sure and do the subtraction first. Now I'm going to close parentheses open parentheses, and now I have an equal sign as a formula element, some parentheses, two relative cell reference, a math operator subtraction, then on the outside, a math operator multiplying, and another relative cell reference. Now I can Control Enter, and there's my 690. Whew. I got the cost of goods sold correct. I can double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. That is looking good. A bunch of different important formula elements. Don't forget those parentheses if you want to force a particular math operation to occur before another math operation. Now I'm going to click Escape. Let's go look at our first text example. We want to go down to example number five. Our goal is to join text and an item number into a cell. So here's our data set. We actually have products in one column, and we have item number in another. Well, what we really need is not this item. For each product, I need actually the text, I-T-E-M, a space, the pound symbol, another space, and then the number. So instead of actually copying and pasting, I'm going to copy and type type out and then Control V and then do that for each one. Instead of doing that, I'm simply going to join some text. So I'll type out that text one time, and I'll join it to this number in a formula and copy it down. Now, this will be the first time that we've seen the join operator. Ampersand is the fancy word. It really is just the and symbol. The keyboard, of course, is Shift 7. This will also be the first time that we've seen how to put text into a formula. And we always have to remember to use double quotes. All right, so let's see how to do this. Equal sign, that's a formula element. And I'm going to type, and this is a mistake, item space, pound sign space. That will not work. And in fact, I'm going to enter this and show you what happens. Notice there's an equal sign and some text. 
The only thing we've seen so far that would work like this is if I had equal sign and there was a name of a function like sum or round. If I enter, well, it's not going to even let me do that. Let's see if I can backspace, backspace. If I were to enter this, it's polite. It says I have no idea what the name of that function is. If I hit F2, notice there's no item function like there are sum and round. I'm going to put the space, the pound sign, and the space. So no problem. Anytime you want text in a formula, you have to remember to put a double quote at the beginning and a double quote at the end. Also notice, I put a space there. And even though we usually don't think of the space bar as a character, it really is. There's an I, a T, an EM, a space, a pound sign, and a space. So they're all in double quotes. Now I do Shift 7, the ampersand. And that allows me to join one item with another item. Now notice that's hard coded in as text. And we're always going to join it to the relative cell reference. So when I Control, Enter, and double click and send it down, go to the last cell, F2, that's beautiful. We have totally created the required item number for our system. And notice this is text. The default alignment is to the left. All right, F2 and the formula elements we used in this text formula equal sign. In double quotes, we put our text. We used the, the join operator and a relative cell reference. We join two items together in our text formulas. Now, anytime you use the join operator, you will always get as a result text. Now, let's go look at another example. All right, example six. We need to see how to join first and last name into one cell. Now, here's a great example, a common example. We're given first and last name. And we simply need to have both of those names in a single cell. So instead of copying and pasting, oh, that would take too long, let's use a formula and simply join the first name and the last name. All right, so I'm in cell D82. Equal sign starts all formulas. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys to get that relative cell reference, the join operator ampersand, and then that left arrow key to get a relative cell reference. Now if I Control Enter, there's going to be a problem. And the problem is we didn't need to just join first and last. We actually needed to join three things, first name, then a space, then last name. So we need to edit our formula, F2. And after the first ampersand, notice the blue cell, that represents the first name. But we need to join the first name with a space. So right after the ampersand, I do not just type a space. Any characters have to be in double quotes, backspace. So I put double quote, space, double quote. Now notice, here's a great trick when you're creating formulas. Whenever you see a black cell reference, you know that there's something wrong with the formula. And what's wrong with this is that we need to join one, two, three things. And if we're joining three things, that means we need two ampersands. I now need to join the space to the last name. So now ampersand. And there we go. That formula contains the formula elements equal sign, relative cell reference, the join operator, in double quotes, some text. And in our case, it's a space. Join symbol and a relative cell reference. Now we can Control Enter, double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. That is beautiful. Now, over here in our next example, we don't want first and last. We actually want the last name, then join comma and a space and the first name. So this also will be a text formula. We'll start with an equal sign, relative cell reference, last name. And now we need to join the last name to a comma and a space. So ampersand, that's our join symbol, double quote, 
comma, space, and double quote. So far, I've just joined first and some text. But now I need to join the text to the last name. So I use another ampersand, and then arrow over to get the first name, not the last name. And that formula will work. Equal sign, relative cell reference, join operator, text in double quotes, another join operator, and another relative cell reference. Control-Enter, double-click, and send that down. Go to the last cell, F2. So two more great examples of when we need to create a text formula, and we're using the join operator and some text in double quotes. Enter. Now, both of these examples and the one we did up here, all of these are text formulas where we are joining items together into a single cell. Sometimes we need text formulas to, in essence, do the reverse. So we're going to look at example 7 and 8. And in example number 7, we need to extract the state abbreviation. And this is a product code. And this is common in transactional data sets where you have dollar amounts for certain sales. There's all sorts of different types of product codes. And in this business, they use the product ID, the name of the product. And then at the end, they have the state where the product came from. So we have a column of these product codes. And all we want is the state abbreviation. So from each one of these product codes, we need to get the state and bring it over into the cell. Now, a bit of terminology here. In databasing and computer terminology, whenever we're dealing with text, we usually refer to the text as a text string. So each one of these is considered a text string. So we have a bunch of product codes that are really text strings. And for each one of these, we need to extract the state. Now, anytime you're extracting text from a larger text string, you have to first recognize a pattern. What is the pattern that's going to allow us to build a formula to always get the state abbreviation? Well, this example is relatively straightforward. If we were counting, each one of these text strings has a different number of characters. But for us, we're always trying to get the last two characters. The last two characters from the right of the text string. So anytime you're trying to get the last number of characters from a text string, you can use the right function. So equals right. Now right simply requires that you give it text and then num characters. That's how many characters from the right. So the text, I'm going to click on relative cell reference, comma, and since state abbreviation is always two characters, we can simply hard code this in by typing a 2. Now, this formula has equal sign, then a built-in function, the right function, relative cell reference, and then a number typed in, close parentheses. And watch what happens when I enter this, Control-Enter. The right function and other text functions like the left function will always deliver the result as text. And so when I double click and send this down, go to the last cell, F2, I have extracted the state abbreviation with a text formula. Now let's go look at our next text formula example. Our goal is to extract the product number, but not using the right function. We're going to use the left function. Now this company has a product code where they have the product number and then the product name. And we simply need, with a formula, to extract each one of the product numbers. Now, this company always has six digits in their product number. So that makes the pattern recognition easy to figure out. Six characters from the left. So we're going to come over to cell C108. Equal sign starts all formulas. A built-in function will use the left function. 
for the text. I'm going to left arrow to put in a relative cell reference, comma, number of characters. We're going to hard code 6 in because it's always going to be 6, and that number's not going to change. 6. Now we can close parentheses, Control Enter. And look at that. Just as we said, text functions like left and right will always deliver text. And we can tell because that's a line to the left. Now, that's never going to be a problem for us because these numbers are never going to be used in math formulas like for adding. They are simply to identify the product with this product number. So we can double click and send that formula down, go to the last cell in F2, and there's our text formula using equals left function, a built-in function, relative cell reference, and a number typed into our formula. All right, so those are some good examples of text formulas. Now we got to scroll down and look at example number nine. And we're going to see for the first time a logical formula. Now, logical formulas only deliver one of two things, either true or false. So our goal in this formula is to determine if debits equal credits. Now, in accounting, this is a big deal. We always have to verify if the debits are equal to the credits. It's one of two formulas in accounting that help us keep all of our records in balance. So I can clearly see that these two cells are equal. The total for debit is 448. The total for credit is 448. So I'm good to go. My system is in balance but not so fast. Formulas are sometimes smarter than we humans. Visually verifying doesn't always guarantee that those two numbers are in balance. So off to the side, this is going to be our first logical formula. Well, watch this. Equal sign, as we've seen so many times in this class so far, all formulas start with an equal sign as the first character in the cell. Now I'm going to click on the cell B127. That has debits. And now we're going to type a second equal sign. This is the first time we've used a comparative operator in a formula. Equal sign is going to ask the question, are the two things equal? We're going to compare two things on either side of the equal sign. All right, so now I'm going to click on credit total. Now, equal sign, that's the character that tells Excel this is a formula. Two relative cell references and a comparative operator, in our case, an equal sign. It's going to ask if these two things are equal. And remember, formulas don't see number formatting. So this formula will see whatever is under in the cell and tell us true or false. So when I hit Enter, false. What is going on? Yes, in accounting and budgeting and reconciliation, we do this all the time. We always want a formula to verify that things are in balance. When it says false, that tells us we have to investigate. Now, as we've seen a lot of times in this class, probably number formatting is the culprit. So I'm going to highlight all of the cells. And I'm kind of eyeing here. I see there's a 0.7 there, 0.7 there. There's a 0 0.49, 0 0.5 there. So I'm kind of eyeing just before I apply the general formatting. Now, we can use the drop down general, or we can use our keyboard, Control, Shift, tilde, or grave accent. And just like that, I can see that someone, it looks like these two things should be equal, but someone type 0.5 for some reason. And instead of trying to track it down, they were just hiding the decimals to make it look like it was in balance. So I'm going to increase the decimals back up here. And I'm going to come and fix the problem. Now, actually, I wouldn't be able to fix the problem just looking at this. I'd actually have to go look at the source documents and see, was it 49 or 50? So I went and looked at the source documents. And sure enough, it wasn't 49, it was 50. So I'm going to type 0.5 and Enter. And now everything looks like it's in balance over here. 
But our formula is the one that really knows. And yes, it's true. Debits are equal to credits. Now let's go look at another great example for a logical formula using comparative operators. Now I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. So in this class, we'll get to see the comparative operator equal, greater than, less than, and we'll see greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. In this class, we won't use not, but in the class after this one, Business 218 Spreadsheet Construction or the Highline Excel class at YouTube, we'll definitely get to see not. But the symbols we want to think about for this example is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Now in math, we would have a symbol like this, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. That's a single symbol that represents that comparative operator. That's a single symbol that represents that comparative operator. But in Excel and many other computer languages, Access, when we get to access, this will be true also. We have to type two characters, one after the other, greater than, then the equal sign, or less than, and then the equal sign. Now, that's going to be important here, because look at this example. Very common in payroll. We have a column of employees, their sales. And we just need the column to tell us whether or not they got the bonus. Over here, that's the hurdle. You have to either get exactly 55,000 or more in order to qualify for the bonus. So in every cell, I need to be asking the question, are the sales for this employee greater than or equal to 55,000? Down here, I need to ask, are the sales greater than or equal to the hurdle? So let's try to do this. D135, equal sign, that tells Excel we're doing a formula, relative cell reference, that is the employee sales. And remember, we're asking, is that bigger than or equal to? So I'm going to type greater than or equal to. The bigger sign is pointing towards the employee sales. So only when that's bigger than or equal to this amount right here, will we get a true? When it's not, like this employer right here, there'll be a false. Now, we definitely need to lock F135. So I hit the F4 key. And that is a logical formula where the formula elements are an equal sign to start the formula, relative cell reference, the comparative operator greater than or equal to, and an absolute cell reference. Now we can Control-Enter. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell in F2. That is working. We have our relative cell reference, our locked on the hurdle, and we have our column of trues and falses. So only Emma and Abdi qualify for the bonus. So that's another example, F2, of a logical formula equal sign relative and absolute cell reference, and our comparative operator. All right, let's go look at a few more examples. I'm going to scroll down. For example, 11, our goal is to count how many of each product were sold. So here's product and sales. We're only interested in this column right here. Down here, we have our criteria, Aspen, Quad, and Sunset. And we want a formula that will count with one condition. Well, we've used this a few times in this class. Since we're counting with one or more conditions, we use the count ifs function. Now, criteria range one, that's the entire column containing all the product names. So I highlight and be sure to hit the F4 key. That needs to be locked as we copy down. Then a comma. Criteria? That's a relative cell reference. Close parentheses. Before we enter, there are four formula elements. Equal sign starts all formulas. Built-in function count ifs. We have a range of cells that are locked to make it an absolute range of cells. And then we have a relative cell reference. 
So we can control enter, double click, and send it down. Be sure to go to the last cell and hit F2, verifying that the range is locked and the criteria is a relative cell reference. And of course, that is a number formula because it's delivering a number answer. Let's go look at our two more examples. Example 12, our goal is to create a formula to determine whether we need to reorder. We have the beginning quantity. That's how many units we had on the shelf before the period. And we tracked how many units we sold. So if we subtract 121 units sold from the original start count of 146, we'd get 25 units on hand. That means how many units we have sitting on the shelf today. Our hurdle for reorder is 25. Anything less than 25, then we have to reorder. That is not less than 25, so that's a false. False, we do not need to reorder. It's not less than 25, it's exactly 25. Six, that's a true, we need to reorder. False and true. So let's create our formula. But I want to talk about this list over here. This is actually the list of how Excel calculates any formula. Now, earlier in this video, we talked about the math order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplying, dividing left to right, and adding and subtracting left to right. But as we've seen in this video, there's other operators that we can put into our formula, like ampersand and comparative operators. So this is the entire list. Now, parentheses are always first. Reference operator, you don't need to worry about that. That's just for a range of cells, or when we put multiple ranges in, the colon and the comma have to evaluate so we get all of the numbers. Then the sum can add. Negation, anytime you put a minus sign in front of a number, Excel considers it a negative number. So that would be negative 2 raised to the fourth power. The fourth thing that Excel calculates, and we're never going to do this, is if you typed a percentage into a formula, Excel would have to convert it because it doesn't know what to do with that symbol. That's just a formatting thing. So Excel is programmed, if you did type this in, to convert it to an actual number that it can use for whatever the calculation is. Then finally, we get to exponents, multiplying and dividing left to right, adding and subtracting left to right. And look at this at the bottom, ampersand, and at the very bottom, comparative operators or comparative symbols. Now, I need to compare each one of these to the hurdle. But for this formula, I don't want to use this cell. I want to build that calculation, which F2 is just simply beginning units minus the units sold. I actually want to use that in our formula over here to help us illustrate. Excel's calculating order. Now I'm going to type an equal sign, and then I need to compare each one of these amounts to the hurdle. Now as I copy this down, this needs to be locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 key. And then I'm going to use the comparative operator greater than, greater than, because I need to ask the question, is the hurdle greater than 69? Well, that would be false. Is the hurdle 25 greater than 6? That would be true, and so that's what we want. So I'm going to create the formula again, beginning quantity, and then the math operator minus, and click on units sold. Now, if Excel calculated this left to right, it would get the wrong answer. But we're going to enter this. And then we're going to watch step by step how Excel calculates it. And of course, it'll calculate the subtraction before the comparative operator, just as we see over on this list. Subtraction comes before the comparative operator. Now I'm going to Control Enter, double click and send it down. And sure enough, I can see I got the two trues for reorder here. But let's go to the last cell and hit F2. All the cell references are working. The hurdle is locked in those relative cell references. But now I'm going to click Escape. And with that cell selected, let's learn a great trick. We can go up to the Formulas ribbon tab, over to Formula Auditing, 
and there's a great button, Evaluate Formula. So if I click on Evaluate Formula, it will step through this formula step by step and see how it calculates. All right, you can either click Evaluate or I'm going to use the Enter key. Notice the hurdle cell is underlined, so when I hit Enter, Excel evaluates that and says, OK, that's 25. Then Excel looks inside of B170, Enter. Then inside of C170, Enter. And notice, Excel is totally going to subtract before it does the comparative operator. So now I hit Enter. And there's our logical formula with two numbers. Is 25 bigger than 3? True. And when I hit Enter, there's the result. We do need to reorder. I'm going to close this or click Escape. F2, so the formula elements we had here, equal sign, absolute cell reference, comparative operator, in our case greater than, relative cell reference, math operator, relative cell reference. All right, I'm going to hit Enter. Now we have one last example. So in this example, we have a simple calculation. We need to calculate net income. But we were given a strange situation. Normally, when we're calculating net income, we have a total expense row. So we we type total expense, and then we'd add up all of the expenses. But that's not what this report needed. It just wanted to list everything and just the bottom line. So watch this formula. Equals, I definitely need to, for net income, take total revenue. So equal that cell reference. And then I need to subtract, that's a math operator, the total of all of the expenses. And right in the formula, I'm going to type out SUM. I see some highlighted in blue, so I hit the Tab key. Now, in the number argument, I'm going to click and drag to highlight just the expenses, then close parentheses. And look at that formula. Equal sign, cell reference, math operator minus a built-in function. And then inside the built-in function is a range of cells. And when I hit Enter, that's the correct net income. All right, in this video, we saw a lot of different examples. I'm going to control home to jump up to the top. We saw a bunch of different number formulas. We saw a bunch of different text formulas and even a few logical formulas. And we went over multiple times all of the different formula elements that we can have in formulas. Equal signs, cell references, math operators, numbers if they won't change, built-in functions, the join symbol or join operator, ampersand, text in double quotes, and even comparative operators. Now, our next video will talk about a specific logical function called the if function. All right. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next video.